In this video, we're going to go over setting up PayPal for LearnDash. You can see here that I have a plain demo site, the default 2021 theme. I have a couple things set up already. We can take a look. I have only LearnDash and I have a WordPress mailing SMTP plugin. I have this plugin to make sure that all my emails are being sent, new user registrations are set up. We have a webinar on that. Uh, getting emails to send in WordPress. I recommend checking that out for further details on making sure emails send. And then everything else is just default WordPress. A couple other things I have, we'll go ahead and take a look at the, the general settings. You want to make sure that anyone can register. You want to make sure that all your links have uh, SSL set up. There's a couple things that we also want to keep in mind. Let's go back over to our settings. We're assuming that everything is currently set up properly on your site regarding user registration, the learn dash pop-ups uh, for a login, log out, meaning your login, log outs. And we're also assuming a couple of things with PayPal. Uh, we're assuming that you're, you already have your PayPal account set up and it is verified with your bank. One other thing to keep in mind is you want your PayPal email address and your PayPal uh, email address here in the setting to be the same email address and the primary email address. PayPal does allow you to have multiple email addresses, but it needs to be your primary PayPal email address. PayPal comes with LearnDash. No need to install any additional add-ons and works out of the box. You find PayPal settings here at the top. So you go to LearnDash settings, PayPal. If you have no other plugins installed, it's going to be the third tab at the top. One thing we like to do at LearnDash is make sure everything has a tooltip. I'll go ahead and turn all these on just so we can see them. Also, everything that I'm reviewing is covered here in the PayPal settings in our documentation. I'll make sure the link is in the bottom of this video. In reviewing the settings going down from the top, you have your PayPal email address. This needs to be your primary email address, even though PayPal does allow you to have multiple email addresses. Also, one thing to keep in mind, PayPal only allows you to have one site connected to the account at a time. Unlike Stripe, where you can have multiple websites, PayPal really wants you to be one business, one website uh, per account. The second input is currency. For the United States, it's USD. The third input is the country code. Here's links to help find your country code and currency code, if you would like. They're provided by PayPal. The cancellation URL is where the user would go back to your site when canceled or when a payment failed. This can be a tailored page and you would need to create this page. The PayPal return URL is where you want your users to return to once they have a successful payment. The PayPal notification URL is set automatically. You should not have to set this. If for some reason you do have to set this URL, it is your full domain forward slash SFWD dash LMS forward slash PayPal. And if you would like to use a sandbox account, you can also set that up and you can click yes here. Just by clicking yes doesn't mean you automatically have a sandbox account. You actually have to set that up at PayPal. And when you set that up at PayPal, you have to set up two accounts, a developer and a seller sandbox account so you can properly test. And my suggestion is test through a couple of times with real money, set your course to a uh, cheaper amount, PayPal and testing, Let's you go down to about 10 cents. Stripe requires a minimum of 50 cents. Once I test a couple times, I will change my course settings. Let's go ahead and take a look. You'll see what I'm talking about. This is where you would set your course. And once you have PayPal configured, you would want to make sure that your course is set either to a buy now or a reoccurring. A closed means you're selling your course with a third party or you're giving access manually. Free means the course is free, but does re require registration. And open means no registration. 
So once that you, you've tested a couple of times and you know your gateway is working, a lot of times I'll switch it over to free right before launch. I'll go back to buy now, I'll do a couple more tests and then I'll switch the amount to the full amount. Okay, so next let's look at a couple things in PayPal because just because you have these URLs set doesn't mean that it's actually going to work. Now that we have all the settings actually set here in the PayPal settings, we're gonna have to set up a couple things in PayPal. All the instructions that I'm reviewing again are in this support documentation located on our site. There's a couple notes that we're highlighting in red. This is the one saying that your email address needs to match your primary email. You wanna make sure that automatic redirects are enabled in PayPal. And we also wanna make sure that your IPN is set up and working. We wanna make sure that your PayPal account is verified, that your email addresses match, that your web host has curl enabled, that the IPN simulator doesn't return any errors, your currency code and your country code are correct. Okay, so we're actually going to look at my one of my test PayPal accounts. This is an actual PayPal account. Uh, you can see that I've been testing with all the transactions here below. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that we have redirects enabled. So we're gonna go up to your profiles. We're gonna go account settings, so username, account settings. We're gonna come down to the left side. We're gonna come down to the left side and click website payments. We're gonna come over here to the middle, select website preferences, click update. And there's two settings you might want to enable on this page, one for sure. And then the second one is an optional one. You're gonna to want to enable auto returns and you wanna make sure that this URL matches your return URL here from your PayPal settings. You wanna make sure that the, your PayPal return URL is the exact same inside your auto return settings. And then you also might want to turn on the payment data transfers. There's one more setting that you have to set up in PayPal. You're gonna come down here to your instant payment notifications. If you're wondering what instant payment notifications is, it's actually the IPN. It's this URL, payment notification URL is the same thing as the IPN. And this is IPN simulator is also the same URL that we were talking about. So we'll come back here to the PayPal settings. We're gonna to go to the instant payment notifications, click update. It's gonna take you to the old school PayPal look and feel. You wanna make sure that it's enabled. If it's not enabled, you wanna turn it on and enable it. We'll go ahead and click edit so everyone can see what it looks like. You would add the URL, make sure it's enabled, and that's all you have to do. We'll go back to our PayPal settings. And again, to get to those settings, you're gonna to go to your username at the top, account settings, and then you're gonna to go to the left-hand sidebar underneath products and services, website payments. The two settings are you're gonna find are gonna be underneath website preferences and instant payment notifications. Once you have those two things set, it might be a good idea to test to make sure everything is working. Let's go ahead and grab our notification URL. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna load up the simulator that we gotten from the documentation link here, paste in our URL. And we're gonna say that we had a cart checkout. We're just gonna run all this stuff as is It says that the IPN was sent and the handshake was verified. That means our PayPal account is working. Fantastic. So let's go back to our actual website. And now one thing that I like to do and recommend, we have everything working now uh, in theory, but just in case we wanna make sure all the URLs work, everything's sort of working and set. But sometimes I like to come in here and flush the permalinks just in case. You'd be amazed on how many bugs flushing your permalinks gets rid of. So now let's go ahead and refresh this site over here. We have this take this course button and how PayPal works 
In LearnDash, if you're using PayPal as your checkout options and your users do not have an account, during checkout, they will be generated a new user account with their PayPal email address. If they already have an account and they buy a second course, that will automatically be added to uh, their account. And if they're logged in and buy courses, it would also automatically work that way as well. So let's say, let's take this course. I'm logged in with Wapoos, PayPal. So I'm gonna say, pay now. It's gonna take my money. And since we set up the redirect, it'll take about 10 seconds. It redirects us back to the website. Now, one thing we might want to do is set up a custom tailored page. Let's go ahead and take a look at one we have set up for the Stripe demo, which will be the next video. And it gives you a little message that says, thank you for your purchase. Uh, check your email for your account. And if you're a returning customer, log in for your account. So let's go ahead and check our emails. Let's see what happens. We did get a couple emails. We can see that we have 10 cents changing hands from the account into the account. That's great. As the site admin, we also got a new email saying that someone registered for the site. That's fantastic. That means that all the emails and back and forth are being sent. That means the handshakes are working back and forth between PayPal and our website. And the user got their email from the website giving them the new password reset. Now, this is where your profile, this is where the custom thank you page comes in handy that would allow you to let them know what's happening, that you're going to be getting an email with a password reset. Feel free to set that up. A lot of times users will have their customers create accounts before they actually check out to help prevent some of these things, or they'll tailor the landing page like we did here with the Stripe page to let the user know, oh, this is what the next steps are. The user registration system is part of WordPress and it's core WordPress. So therefore, if you would like to tailor or change the emails that are sent, you might wanna look at some of the plugins tailored around default WordPress email editing, or uh, there are filters. If you're a developer, you can override and change these yourselves. So let's go ahead and copy this link and we can see what happens once we log in. Go ahead and click this. It should allow us to verify our account, copy this password. We'll go ahead and log in. We're now logged in. I'm gonna refresh this page. And there we go. This shows that we're logged in. It pulled in my PayPal info. It automatically enrolled us into the course that we paid for. And as you can see, the business owner got their PayPal receipt, the customer got their PayPal receipt. We have our new emails that are registering the user. Everything is fully set up in, in PayPal. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please reach out to the Facebook group. You can find us there. Videos and topics are usually generated from the Facebook group. Leave a comment down below. And these videos are brought to you by LearnDash. Feel free to give us a like, follow, share. I'm James on behalf of LearnDash. Thanks.